So this is a continuation of Cube Rescue. If you haven't seen the first video where I introduced the printer, um, you might want to see that if you're not familiar with what a cube is. Otherwise, this will look at firmware hacking. Um, so welcome to Cube Rescue Part 2. So um, here we'll be talking, taking a look at how to use third-party filaments with your Cube Pro. So the Cube Pro was officially discontinued in sometime 2019. I don't remember exactly when. Um, and that was when 3D Systems announced they would stop producing filament for it. And um, around the time that they announced that was actually um, when the organization who threw this cube out acquired it because they acquired it from a sister organization that was throwing it out because they couldn't get filament anymore, um, is my understanding. So I actually, the f like one of the first things we did with the printer was install custom firmware. So the way I did it was I used uh, this tool on Print 3D Forum, um, which is the Cube Toolbox, which works both with the Cube 3 and the Cube Pro. And it requires you take official firmware and it patches it. It only runs on Windows. Um, there's a better way to do it now. The same person who made the tool made a forum post uh, in September 2019, which is I think like maybe a month after I did it. I'm, um, I, I don't remember when exactly I did it. Um, it's maybe several months after I did it, but it, it's, it's a little while after I did it. Um, the point is this has been around for a while. This has been around since uh, 2017 versus the, the uh, this was, um, oh, this wasn't even September 2019. Huh, well anyways, this was, uh, maybe around when I did it then and I just wasn't aware of it. Anyways, um, th this is nicer because it lets you just download the pre-hacked firmware from Dropbox. Um, so you can go here and just download it. And then the way you install it is you just copy it onto a USB drive and install that on your printer. So, yeah. That's the software. And now let's look at the hardware. So one of the most frustrating things about this mod is that you have to figure out some way to make the printer still think it has a genuine cartridge inserted. So the way I did this is um, I was lucky enough to get a genuine cartridge with the printer because they just kept it in there when they threw it out. And um, I took a little plastic uh, PCB foot basically that you would put through a screw hole in a PCB to get a little plastic foot to stand it on. And I spread that across the metal bar in there um, to make a foot that pushes down on the chip to, to give the chip some mounting tension. Um, and I put a piece of uh, double-sided foam on the bottom as well just to give it a little bit of, um, of grip to the chip. Um, double-sided uh, 3M foam sticky tape. Uh, the other physical modifications I did was I needed some way to mount the new filament internally. Um, so I've seen some people actually do like really nice, um, proper, uh, like uh, 3D printed like filament holders. Um, but I uh, kind of did a, a janky solution that I think works pretty well. And that's take the old, um, old cartridge uh, half of it. And that actually, I tried several different types of uh, filament spools in there and they all fit. So I just used that and then I put a small screw through the printer with a Velcro strap um, as a way to uh, keep that on. And that worked pretty well. And that's the um, extent of the physical modifications I did. And now the printer works with other filament. Uh, it still has to be PLA and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the software side because unfortunately there's no way around um, there's no way to manually set the print temperature even when you're using third-party slicers, but we'll, we'll talk more about that in part three.